Okay. I'm going to do this quick broadcast. I don't know if Anthony's going to tag in or not. I'm waiting on him to tag in. It's a guy from uh, YouTube, Anthony Verdin. I guess he had a question on one of my videos. Uh, let me pull up the email real quick. We're actually getting ready to go to my son's birthday party. So I want to do this real quick. I, hopefully you can tag in, Anthony, if you're seeing this. But I'll read your questions and then uh, try to address them real quick. And the first one says, uh, now that I watch your videos, let me see if I can pull it up on the screen. How does that work? Let me copy this real quick. Let me, then I'll add one. Oh, wait. How do you uh, add a note here? All right, I'm trying to add this note so you can see it. Oh, here you go. All right. Here that is. All right, let me do a screen share. Uh, where's the screen share? Oh, right here. Perfect. Notes. There you go. All right, says, now I watch your videos, and for one, I'm glad you're doing them. I happen to agree with a lot of what you're saying. By salvation, come to those who simply have faith, believe in Yehoshua. No, I, I never preach that. Not Yehoshua, Jesus, J-E-S-U-S. -S. So we definitely have a disagreement there. In the New Testament, it was written in Greek not in Hebrew, so Jesus' name was never a Hebrew name. It was never given to us in the Hebrew name. People that believe in those manuscripts, we don't even have a Hebrew manuscript of the New Testament. So uh, that name is uh, the name of uh, the Antichrist, and I'll show you in Scripture. Um, Jeshua is, and Je Jehoshua is actually used in Scripture uh, for Joshua. This is Joshua, not Jesus. All right. I do, as I stated before, have a few questions. I keep hearing people say the King James is the standard to which I have to ask which one, the original 1611. Well, that's what people say, that's history. No one was there to say it was original 1611. So I don't prescribe to even the King James Bible history. I prescribe to the King James Bible uh, doctrine, the word, the actual words of God. I don't care about a name of a book or a date of a book. I care about the actual physical uh, word scripture uh, that I have in front of me. And so I compare that with any manuscript and what I have in front of me um, written or even on, on um, application format is, uh, stands out. It's the words that matter, not the date. So original 1611, that's what they say, let God be true and every man a liar. It may or may not have originated in 1611. I don't know. None of us even have any of those books. They may say that, well, here's one. Yeah, but you're believing a man. You're not believing God. And then you easily can look at the scriptures and compare the scriptures and see which ones are, are true or lie. That's how you can tell. All right. I have to ask which one, the original 1611, would... Uh, with books such as Tobeth and Maccabees. Okay, all right, well, that's a, that's obviously not God's word. You can look in those scriptures and, and see the lies in there. So that's not God's word. So I would assume the 1611, if it had that, that's not God's word. <laughs> so, Or the 1769 Oxford or Cambridge. Um, again, it doesn't matter the dates or whatever history. None of us were back were alive back then. So you can only deal with what God is only going to um, hold you accountable for what you have in front of you or what you do with what you have in front of you. Not believing man's history. Man are liars. It says, let God be true and every man a liar. So I just go by God's word. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word of God, not every word of man's history. All right. If 400 years is a standard, then 1,000 years of the Latin is an, is an amazing, don't get me wrong, I'm just wondering, oh, in case you were wondering, 
Pickering. I have a King James uh, version from 1654. There's another date, you know, those kind of things. So, you know, Satan is subtle. So the scripture tells us be wise as serpents, harmless as doves. Um, so, of course, he's going to try to throw out, oh, I, you know, the King James Version was originated this time. And then this time it changed. And then I have a version of this time. Uh, he wants to send doubt. And so um, the, I can just challenge anyone to show me a b better book than the King James Bible. And show me the one that you know that I have in front of me. You can pull up the Bible Gateway app and, and look at King James Version. I challenge anyone to show me any better words of God than that. Uh, if it's sixteen eleven, seventeen sixty nine, if it doesn't if it doesn't compare scripturally with what we have today, it's not God's word. It's that simple. I don't care if you call it manuscripts. I don't care if you think it's the Greek Texas Receptus, whatever. None of them stand up to the King James Bible that we have today. So um, the history of that Bible, I'll show you in Scripture where it says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scriptures of any private interpretation. Um, it came in the old time, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. Um, we'll look at that. Which I was blessed with great book, a few extra books in there. Question two, what do you think of the order manuscripts that was given to us after the King James Version was written, should they be the standard to hold all translation to, or do we say the Greek is say substandard to the King James? See, so what it is, is he's weighing a lot on man, and man is the one that's given us God's word in, in, in this email question. So I, I don't prescribe to that. So let me show you what I prescribe to. I prescribe to God's word that God is the one that gave us his word. So let me pull this up. Um, and I have about 10 minutes. We have to leave out taking card to a bowling alley with some of his buddies. going to have some fun bowling. Um, where am I at? It's either first or second, Peter. Always. Yeah. This is one of Kari's memory verses, so I should wait. You know what? Yep. Second Peter. All right. So we start at 19. It says, we also, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. More sure. See that? And they're talking about, he's referring, and this voice which came from heaven, we heard when we were with him in the holy mouth. So if you even hear a voice from heaven, God's voice from heaven, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. Prophecy is spoken word of God. So it's more sure what we have today than even if you were to hear the word come from heaven. That's what I believe. If you don't believe that, then you're going to fall for these lies of Yehoshua and uh, these 1611 and 1769 and 1856, whatever. You're going to fall for that. We have a more sure word than that. Whereunto ye do well that ye take heed. If you take heed to this, you're doing well. If you don't, guess what? You're going to fall for the okie doke. As unto a light that shineth in a dark place. That's right. Jesus is the light of the world. Jesus is the word. His light, his word is shining in this dark world that we're living in. Until the day dawn and the day star arise in our hearts. How can a day star arise in your hearts unless you have the word that talks to your heart? It's a, it's a sharper than any two-edged sword. Dividing sunder of soul and spirit. And, uh, and uh, discerner of the intentions of the heart. So the word of God, it will rise in your heart when you have the true word of God. That's how you know you have it. Knowing this first, see, knowing, you should know this. It's no guesswork. Knowing this first, that no prophecy, spoken word of God, of the scripture, written word of God, is of any private interpretation. So guess what? King James Bible, his translators, um, uh, any no one in privately interpreted God's word. Well, how did it get here? For the prophecy came not 
in old time. 1611 is an old time by the will of man. So guess what? Man's history is wrong. It did not come by the will of King James. It did not come by the will of uh, the Catholic Church. It did not come by the will of Egyptian, you know, pharaohs or anything like that. Not by the will of man, but holy men of God spake, spoken, spake, prophecy, spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So the Holy Ghost is what gave us God's word, not man. So you either believe that or you believe a lie from man. And I would rather believe God's word. If you can't believe that God has given us his word, then you can't believe that God has given us salvation through Jesus Christ because Jesus is the word. All right. So Romans 10, I'm sorry, Romans uh, 4. Romans, let's see, I can go back. Let me go back on this thing. All right, Romans 3. Romans 3. All right. For what if some, 3, 3, and 3, 4. For what if some, I mean, oh, is the screen up? Okay, good. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? God forbid. Yea, let God be true. The only way you can let God be true is to choose to believe God. God is already true, but you have to let him be true to you by believing him. So I choose to believe God's word and not man's word. Let God be true, but every man a liar. That, in, that includes King James. That includes you, me, every man. As it is written that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And guess what? You're going to be judged, but you can overcome if you believe in God's word and not man's. All right? And then let's go to this Jehoshua, because this is in Scripture. Let's go to the right. All right, another H in there. Let me see. Uh... I think it's another H in there. S H. There you go. Guess what? He's in there twice. These are the name in Numbers 13, 16. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called O'Shea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. See? That's Joshua, the son of Nun. O'Shea, that's his other name. Moses gave him a name. This is not God giving him a name. Like Abram was given Abraham by God. Moses gave O'Shea Jehoshua. That's not a God-given name. There's only one name given among men whereby we must be saved. It's not Jehoshua. It's Jesus. First, uh, this is Chronicles. Yes, First Chronicles 7, 20, uh, 27. None, his son, Jehoshua, his son. See that? The son of Nun, N-O-N, N-U-N, the different spellings, but uh, the same uh, son of Nun. Now let's see who is the son of Nun. Let's type that in. Son of Nun. Hmm. This is the only reference of Yeshua as the son of Nun in the King James Bible. Um, and guess what? All the new translations take it out. Nehemiah eight seventeen. If you read that whole chapter, it's, it is it, the children of Israel having what we would call today church. See, these buildings are not churches. Um, we are the church. And so they copy the children of Israel. So what was meant for the children of Israel, the people are taking today and making it into a business. So if you look at that, read that whole chapter and you'll see. And that, guess what? That's where... The Antichrist is going to be worshipped in his faith church. And so you think you're going on Sundays and you think that you're worshipping God, but guess what? You're going to be worshipping the Antichrist because you're, you're singing praises to his name, Yeshua, Jehoshua, and uh, all these other names, but you're not singing to Jesus. And that's not the church. We are the church. God does not worship with men's hands. And... Uh, and, um, you know, he, he doesn't need a building, uh, building built with men's hands. All right. 
Nehemiah 8, 17, and all the congregation of them that were come together, congregation, see, of them that were come again out of the captivity made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Yeshua, the son of Nun, see, is it Yehoshua, O'Shea? He had like six names, six or seven names, uh, six or seven spellings, different names, and that's, that's pretty common, to, you know, um, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego um, had, had, had a different name. They were given a name from uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, that wasn't their Hebrew name. That was the name that uh, was given to them. Now, that's just a common thing. You know, um, a lot of people will give them names. And Yeshua is one of them. That's not, that's not the name of Jesus. All right? So, no, we don't agree there, sir. I'm sorry that you think that, but that's not what we agree. I agree with scripture where it says in Acts 4, it says, Acts 4.10, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel. See, Israel's the one that's trying to change the name, trying to give him a Hebrew name. His name is not Hebrew. All right. That by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, this name, whom ye crucified, Yes, the people of Israel crucified Jesus. The scripture makes it plain and clear. Whom God raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand before you whole. This is the stone which was set at naught of you builders, which is become the head of the corner. Neither is there salvation in any other. No Je Yeshua, Yehoshua, no any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must. I love that word must. It makes it plain and clear. Must be saved. This is why you need the King James Bible because it's very clear. You need to live by every word. And these new translations change a lot of this up. See? Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. See, perception is not reality. They marveled and they took knowledge of them that they had been with Jesus, not Yeshua. So it's, it's very clear that uh, the King James Bible is the word of God. Jesus tells us we must live by the word but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out the mouth of God. So that means the by, the of, the written, every word. So we can't mess with these new translations or even these so-called 1611s and all of these Latins and Maccabees. Uh, because they don't have every word of God. If you find one error, it's not God's word. What does Titus 1 tell us? Paul, a servant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ. Paul is the servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledging of the truth, which is after godliness and hope of eternal life. This is what we're promised, which God that cannot lie God cannot lie so if there's a lie an error in God's word it's not God's word that's that's that simple promise before the world began but in and but half in these due times manifested his word through preaching that's why we preach because his word is manifested when we preach it that's why you're supposed to go preach you believers are supposed to preach it which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. Guess what? That's God's commandment for us to preach. He committed it to Paul. Paul is telling us to be followers of him as he's followers of God. So you are commanded to preach. To Titus, mine own son, after the common faith, we have a common faith. People are only saved by the common faith. It's no unique experience. 
grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, our Savior. And say Yeshua. So I just wanted to share that with you. It's 12 o'clock. We got to head out. I was hoping that uh, people would tag in, but uh, Anthony or Chris or anybody that wants to tag in later, we'll do another one. Um, I just hope that uh, that was a blessing to you. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you guys next time. God bless. We out. King James Bible. Read it every day.